Hey everybody, welcome to season 4 of What's IGN Crushing On? I'm Karen Walby solomon and I'm your host, and we're here to talk about what's hot in pop culture. Today's episode is brought to you by Syntec. Syntec is a technology company that sources and distributes industry-leading products and brands from around the world. Welcome guys to episode 10. Today we're having a little bit of a catch-up because it's, you know, we haven't had a pop culture chat in a while and um, I wanted to welcome Leanne back onto the podcast. So welcome Leanne. Hi, welcome. Like I don't love you at all. (laughs) Although it has been a while. I mean, yeah, a whole one week. Uh, well, since I was here, sure. But I mean, we haven't done a pop culture in ages. You've just been mm. lining up the celeb guests between Katrina Law and Isha Blocker and Young Famous and African. And obviously our two wonderful roundtables, Euphoria and Bridgerton. Uh, I feel like we just haven't caught up in what's happening in the world of celebs. Which is, you know, very important to us. Um, (laughs) we can't just talk to them we must also talk about them but um, (laughs) but you know talking about the round tables last week's round table we spoke about Bridgerton and it you know Bridgerton has been such a um, it's been having a moment right now Bridgerton season 2 FOMO I had such FOMO literally so context I knew Karen was planning the the round table and I really wanted to watch finish the season in time because you guys were recording at like what 10 a.m on Sunday but uh you know when you have a social life it just doesn't always work out but I kid you, you not about me <laughs> <laughs> yeah but Karen this is your life you watch the things <laughs> you entertain us you give us your wonderful opinions um but I kid you not, we had a birthday on Saturday. We got home at about eight and we started watching. And I think we watched the first four episodes on Saturday night. And then Steve and I woke up because now Steve's in it. I love that he, he <laughs> hates it, but he's in it now. He's with me. <laughs> um, we woke up on Sunday morning, went back to the couch and carried on watching <laughs> the rest of it. So I think we finished it like just after 11. And I was like, damn it. I have so many things I want to say now. <laughs> um so yeah like listening listening to the round table was so great just because such a diverse range of opinions about everything that happened because there just was so much to talk about like so much had mm. happened in the season yeah so it was just it was really cool uh but yeah I have thoughts <laughs> okay so we'll give you this little space to tell us your thoughts on the season seeing that we're not done talking about Bridgerton yet <laughs> never, never done. To be honest, the thing that was most surprising is because, okay, so I knew you had watched it before because you'd gotten the pre screener. And I knew how much you didn't like it and how harsh your, your thing towards it was. So as Steve and I were watching it, I think we got about halfway and then just after, and we were like, why didn't Cadden love this? Like, it's so good. <laughs> Because we just really, really enjoyed it. Like you said, they they made it more of an ensemble cast, which was great. I think they developed the characters really well. I think they, certain points probably were a little bit too subtle. So like, it took a while for you to get Anthony and Kate and the the roles and responsibilities and, and living up to expectations versus doing what makes you happy. I think Mm. that wasn't initially clear, but it becomes clearer over time. I enjoyed Edwina. I think obviously in the first half of it, you're like, oh, she's just the prop. She's just the Mm. goody two shoes, nice gal, very naive, blah, blah, blah. But I really liked what they did with her character, especially in the episode with the choice where you Mm. see her come into her own in front of the queen and in that, that scene with the king. And you see, you see her anger and stuff, which was a little bit annoying. But I think at the end of it, it was also because she was trying to prove to Kate that like Kate needs to stop babying her and stop living for her. And so there's a moment where she kind of says like, you need to do this for you because I'm doing stuff for me. So like 
do you know? And I think like that was actually really cool because they they did give her a little bit of depth over and above what she was like in the beginning. Yeah, no, it was a lot. Flip, there was a lot. And then Eloise and Theo. I just I really love Eloise as a character. Um, mm. I I yeah, I, I would have wanted to see more of like how that played out. So I'm I'm keen to see what they do with it because I'd imagine some of it would feature in in upcoming seasons. I don't know. Colin Colin was annoying. The other brother was yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um <laughs> the Featherington drama was just yeah, like a distraction. I don't know. Yeah, there was just it was a lot. But it was good. Overall, I loved it. I I really, really enjoyed what they did with it. Except for making him propose. That scene cut me. I mean, because <laughs> like you, you assume it's going to go one way and then he actually proposed. Then they actually went to the altar and I was just like, this is too far. But yeah. Okay. I'll stop rambling now. Sorry. <laughs> no. I, I mean, I, I, I had a whole episode to talk about it. So, you know. I wanted to give you that space <laughs> to get out your feelings. <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, I, I, as I said in last week's podcast, my, my reaction when to the show initially changed a lot to my final reaction. Mm. Um, because I, I, I rewatched it a few times since I watched For it a research, few times. Of course. For research, yes. I watched it a few times between my initial watch and my final watch. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it again after it came out. I mean, my final watch for the review. So my my opinion did change. I think I was just, there was, it was, there were things that just bothered me. But the things that bothered me was not Kate and Anthony. I freaking Mm. love Kate and Anthony. Like they are a ride or die. I think that they were perfectly cast, that they had great, chemistry i just number one think that they did not get enough screen time Mm, and i will stand by that and number two as you said i feel like this engagement went too long on like i feel like they just had drama for drama's sake where but the thing is that the what what annoyed me about the edwina thing is that edwina in the books and and like everybody's telling me forget the books but edwina in the books is a very perceptive character (laughs) so she is like so she realizes that Anthony's not really that into her. So she kind of steps back. She finds her own love interest. And and Kate is like, and she kind of notices that Kate and Anthony, you know, there's something on. Mm-hmm. And the whole point of that is that Kate realized that she'd been an underestimating Edwina the whole time. Mm-hmm. So, she, you know, for me, that was why I had a bit of a problem. Because, like, you know, I was like, you know, Edwina kind of proves it right because she is marrying a, the wrong guy for her. We mm. left to her own devices. She is choosing the wrong guy. And Kate yeah. she's proven Kate has proven the right why she should be worrying about it, Weena. Um, but regardless, you know, it was a fun season. Like <laughs> I've come to terms with the fact I have <laughs> I, I still think season one was better package, but season two had the better romance, I think. Uh, we should have mm-hmm. compared the two, but I think I uh, love Kate and Anthony with my whole entire heart. I also think that um you know, it, it was made for us, like the two of us. But I also think that they try too hard to to be like Pride and Prejudice. So they 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 try to to hanker into that kind of Pride and Prejudice obsession. So the, there's a lot of scenes that are there were a lot of callbacks to the 2005 yeah. version and yeah. the and the original and the original and the the BBC miniseries. Yeah, like there was and even the book. So like. Whereas I feel like they, they they were very intentional about making to to bite into that nostalgia and that that kind of like public obsession with Pride and Prejudice, mm-hmm. and I mean it worked for them. But I was just like you know they also have a lot the couple themselves have a lot that work for them that they didn't actually need to be another replica of Elizabeth and Darcy. Yes, um, I that's get that. what I felt. But anyway, Bridgerton. <laughs> I have be, I've I've like so many Bridget and gifts saved on my phone. It is madness. <laughs> like ninety percent of the storage space on my phone is Bridget and gifts. Anthony saying something or another. Two of them, I don't know, up close and doing something. It's all on my to phone. Sniffing her weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I'm so close to like writing fan fiction again. You have no idea. If I had time, I'm surprised oh you God. haven't yet. I was like if, waiting. <laughs> if I had the time, my girl, I would have been <laughs> plotting, <laughs> plotting, um, the plotting plots already. But yeah, I've been reading. So if anybody wants recommendations, just um, DM me. I will send you some. But put yeah, it in the no. show notes. Yeah, I'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that is Bridgerton. But yeah, guys, please carry on sending us your opinions on Bridgerton. If you liked it, if you hated it, I mean, you know, I'm 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 here for all for all opinions. That being said, what else did you enjoy this week? I mean, oh, this week. What, what else have you been watching recently that you want to chat about? So, obviously, we were running a giveaway, thanks to Sony, were for Morbius. Mm. Uh, Jared, Jared Leto in his transformative role. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I went to go watch that on, on Thursday uh, at a pre-screen. It was really, really cool. Shame. I feel like I feel like Morbius is getting a lot of hate online. Like, and... I'll be fair, the movie did not live up to what we have come to expect from superhero movies. I think just the genres evolved so much with with Marvel and where they've taken it. So, like, you have to have character development, you have to have humor, you have to have great action sequences. Like, the bar is just so high. And I can see how Morbius doesn't quite live up to all of those those standards that being said i do very much get the sense that the good parts of the movie or parts that would have made the movie better were left on the cutting room floor so like steve and i actually came home and ended up re-watching the trailers and there are bits in the trailers that elu- like allude to a much more robust story um, that we just didn't get to see in in the final cut, and so I'm, yeah, I, I understand the frustration. I think it's a perfectly good movie. I think it's it's got what you need. It's got action. It's got a little bit of romance. It's got a really good twist somewhere in there. But yeah, it did it did lack the the depth and the character development that I, I would have wanted to see because you you. It's meant to be Michael Morbius struggling with this person he becomes because he's a doctor and he wants to save lives. And in mm. his pursuit to save himself and others who struggled like him, he becomes essentially a vampire. And so he's meant to be struggling in that and and you just you don't see all of it. So yeah, but I think I think it's a it's a good movie. I would be keen to get other people's opinions on it just because it is I think it is one of those movies that might be a little bit dividing if you if you can give it the benefit of the doubt, you know? Mm. Okay. Excited to see it. Um I mean We do still have a giveaway running. So if you didn't get a chance to watch the movie, we are doing a giveaway on socials for a really cool Mobius hamper. It includes a great little leather catch-all tray and a backpack and a notebook and pen and a really cool aluminium water bottle. So yeah, follow us on social uh, and enter to win. Hmm. You hear that, guys? Follow us on social and enter to win. Um, Took it. I, uh, we're gonna do things a little bit differently this week because I just I actually want to talk about something that I've been crashing on <laughs> this week. Go um, for it. So, it's been so, missing. <laughs> so talking about Jared Leto, I watched this new series called We Crashed about okay. the the launch and the eventual crash of WeWork, and Jared Leto stars as as the WeWork founder Adam Newman. And it's been getting also talking about also probably divisive um, um, critical response, but I really loved it. And um, so the the centerpiece of this show is the romance between Adam and his wife Rebecca New Rebecca Paltrow Newman, who is the cousin of Gwyneth Paltrow, played by Anne Hathaway. And they are, I don't even know how to explain. It. They are super eccentric, like. 
it just feels so right that Jared Leto should play the role. But he also like, <laughs> he encompasses very well. And it, it, t- it shows like how she inspires him to come up with the idea for WeWork. And, the, and she comes up with the slogan of the company, which is elevating the world's consciousness. <laughs> and it's just bizarre. And and shocking and the gall behind these two people and what they what they do is just I like I don't even know how to describe it, but such amazing performances by, by Jared Leto and especially Anna Hathaway. She mm. like like she's doing excellent voice work. Her voice is like this deep level and she talks like this all the time. And the and she brings so much depth to the character of Rebecca. Like, this is something that I said, but what I enjoyed what they're doing in comparison to maybe like inventing Anna is that they showed us how compelling these characters are, but they didn't necessarily make them sympathetic. Like, I didn't feel sorry. I got a bit annoyed by them. I didn't feel sorry for them, but I wanted to know more because they were so interesting. And like, I wanted to see what else they're going to try. So I really, really enjoyed it. So if you're wanting to do a Jared Leto double bowl, you can go to the cinema and watch Morbius and then come <laughs> home and watch We Crashed on Apple TV. Yeah, it's about eight episodes. I think there's about five out right now. And and it, I don't know. It's like, you know, they're, we're into this like scammer culture on TV now. Um, I know. Tinder, swin, Tinder Swindler and the vegan the lady. Vegan. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Vinci clearly Anna. the latest thing, <laughs> but yeah. So I think this is a this is a this is a good addition to the to the. I, I wouldn't actually call them scammers. I don't think that they were scammers, but like into this kind of bad entrepreneur um, founder energy. And it's also very um, anybody who worked in in any kind of maybe creative or corporate space in like the nineteen tens. Oh, no, 2010s, what am I saying? 2010s, yeah. 2010s would know that kind of like, oh, we want to make work cool so people will stay there all night, but we're going to pay people a very little amount of money. Like, but we're a family. We're a we family. Each other. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very much, you, you, you'll you feel extremely triggered. Um, <laughs> um, Trigger warning. And they, yeah, and at one point they do call out how insane that is as a concept of a working space. But... Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's brilliantly done. So actually, we need to talk about what else happened this week because by the last time we recorded was Bridgerton, so we, we couldn't talk about it then. But So the Oscars happened on Sunday night, Monday morning for us. And Jesus, I don't even... It was a okay. Chaotic let's start about there. who won, and and I yeah. think that before we go to all the other things that occurred that <laughs> evening. <laughs> so when we talk about the Oscars, we we had an episode, episode three of the podcast, where we spoke to um, um, Gabby Zietzman about the nominees and we and so if you want more information about the nominees that's the best episode to listen to because we go quite in depth talking about it so i'm not going to to go talk about the movies as much i mean i did say that you know i when it came i i mean i thought that the power of the dog was going to win best picture and Mm -hmm. i mean i thought dune deserved maybe to win it but the winner was coda which is also a film i really enjoyed and I thought was beautiful. I do think it's kind of a run of the mall tearjerker Oscar movie. I don't think it necessarily should have won. I don't think it was the best picture of the year, number one, but I thought it was a beautiful film. I cried, and it's such a beautiful, oh, I'm saying beautiful a lot, but it's such a beautiful um, uh, way of awarding, you know, the deaf community and what, you know, mm. what they mean and, and, and the intricacies behind them that they're not just disabled there's there's so much more to them than just that and such a and it was also such a beautiful film about a family mm. so i do i did love coda i don't think it necessarily was the best picture but you know it wasn't a terrible choice it wasn't don't well, look up i know you must have mentioned it in the garvey episode but my memory is really shit um who would you have given best picture to I would have given it. I actually I haven't seen all the nominees, so I I can't okay. I can't. I, I haven't not seen a fair judge. Just got released on movie in South Africa, so yeah, I'm not a fair judge. 
but I but if it was me, I would have voted for Dune. I thought that was okay. the the best picture of the year. Well, out of that, out of the nominees, yeah. <laughs> um, best actor, um, Will Smith. I actually wanted Will Smith to win best best actor. This is maybe a. I, I mean, if I had to choose out of all of them, I would have picked Andrew Garfield. But if it was between Will Smith and Benedict Cumberbatch, I wanted Will Smith to win. I thought that he was mm-hmm. very, very good in King Richard. I thought that he like disappeared in the role. He was, and I also think that Will Smith is a very good actor, and mm-hmm. and it was his time to win. Best actress, I haven't seen the eyes of Tammy Faye, so I can't also comment on Jessica Chastain. But I mean, also I think she's a great actress. Jane Champ Champ Campion deserved to win for Power of the Dog. I've gone. No notes on that. And um, other than that, I don't know. Dune winning best visual effects, best original score, best production design. And best best cinematography. Best cinematography, best sound, all deserved. Excellent, excellent film. And I also, the last one I want to comment on is Troy Kotzer, who won best supporting actor for Coda. As I said, like for me, Coda wasn't the best film. But I think that Troy Kotzer deserved to win that award because he was my pick for best supporting actor. I think that that he oh, he was just so funny and so heartfelt in that role. Like I don't, a good dad role is always mm. always gets me. Like you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> I, I'm still sad that like this is, this is a callback to a couple of years ago. But um, what's his name? Michael Strahlberg. I was always sad he wasn't nominated for Call Me By Your Name because I thought that was a good dad role. But but back to this. Um, Troy Kotzer was so good in his performance. And, you know, like, obviously because he had to sign a lot of the dialogue, the emotion was on his face. And mm. whew, uh, there's a scene in the end where, where the main character, um, I can't remember what's her name, but she goes with her parents to um, to the doctor because she is the only hearing member of her family and she has mm-hmm. to sort of like translate for her parents and both her mother and her father's deaf. So she goes with them to the doctor and the doctor says that like, the, I don't know, he's like itching by his genitals or whatever. And the doctor says that like he got it because of, you know, they work on the, like they, they fishermen. So, you know, his, mm. his clothes were kind of damp and that's how, you know, this, whatever was wrong with him, he got it. And then they were like, okay, what do we need to do? And they're like, you need to put on this treatment and you can't have sex for two weeks. And then she's translating this to her parents. And then her parents start getting angry because they can't have sex <laughs> for two weeks. But it is like, they're like, impossible. And it's so funny. And and she has to like translate this back to the doctor. And, Talk about uh, awkward situations with your kid. <laughs> brilliant. Um, so yeah, so the, those are my, my Oscar thoughts. Um, I'm sure other people have different opinions, but for me, for me, those are the winners that I thought like really, really deserved it. And I'm sure there are more, but I also, I'm limited by what I have not seen. So I've mm. got to talk accordingly. Um, I know a lot of people are angry about Jessica Chastain, but I haven't seen the movie, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, the, the slap heard around the world. I don't, I kind of want to pull a Daniel Radcliffe and say that I don't I- want to add. <laughs> my opinion to because i'm already tired of all the opinions that i've that i've that i've already heard but i i do find it kind of sad that that will smith had to resign from the academy and Mm. that his films are getting put on hold because i'm like (sighs) people have been accused of things and have not and their careers haven't taken it and you know, I am also. I felt very uncomfortable at the twenty sixteen. I don't know the year. the 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 Oscar so white year when mm. Chris Rock made those comments um, about Jada, and for me, when I saw this, when he said the comment about the 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 hair, 
I really felt like kind of nauseous because I that's the first thing I thought of was that year mm. when he made those comments about, you know, she's about Rihanna's panties and all that kind of things. And I was just so like, you know, Oscar So White was such a big issue. And the fact that you were a black man and you weren't willing to support it mm. um, said a lot to me. But yeah, I just, yeah, my, my only thoughts is that, you know, <laughs> the only thing I want to say is that I'm just very disappointed at how people are reacting to Will Smith. And especially for somebody who was like, who's been so tailor focused on, on cultivating his career so that he'll be the nice black man always, mm-hmm. you know, I, I know and what you mean. obviously it's going to snap. It's going to, he's going to snap it at some point. Um, but I also hate that while we've been focused on the Will Smith issue nobody is freaking talking about is Jamila and okay, what a so, he is so I literally there were two like when we we were like okay cool are we gonna talk about Slapgate or not um there were two things that that I loved which was two tweets I saw that kind of sum up my thoughts the mm-hmm. one was obviously Daniel Radcliffe saying I don't want to add any more opinions it's done <laughs> I'm done and someone quote tweeted it and said how ironic it is that the lady who gave us three child stars who could so easily have been menaces are the three most reasonable humans and yet the person responsible for their fame is now like a rape, like an idiot, like can't keep yeah. their mouth shut. And I thought that was that was like one one take that I was like, yeah, that's that's funny. Um and the second one was how is no one talking about Ezra Miller being a literal psychopath? What is going on? I'm so confused. What happened? So, so this is. I just want to preface this by saying this is not the first time he's put, like done menacing behavior. So, I, I want to say it was 2020, or maybe it mm-hmm. was 2019. I mean, I think it was 2020. He was in Russia, and he like, and he was uh, arrested. For or, or there was a video taken of him like assaulting a fan, and then it was just like swept under the rug, you know. And now he's now he's he's being a menace on the island of Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, he was arrested for disorderly conduct and harassment because he was attacking people, singing shallow. And also, like, he was, ag- <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you can just walk out the bar. I don't understand. I'm, but- I'm just so, so is he just, like, in these instances, is it, it just him, like, randomly losing his shit at people, like, and then overreacting? Is, is it people he knows that he was there with? No, is it's it just not him? people he knows. It's just him losing his mind at randoms. He's yeah. He's just like he just attacks people at random, like for no reason, Be- or for uh, oh, the one in Russia was he was choking a fan. Yeah, just like yes, for no reason he just attacks people. And to going back to J.K. Rowling, another actor from Fantastic Beasts. So you know, mm-hmm. may- maybe she sacrificed, like the wrong one. Maybe she had to sacrifice Fantastic Beasts so that she could have good child stars in Harry Potter. But it's just wild for me. Like, the thing is that I haven't heard of any of his movies getting frozen. I mean, okay, I'm not going to... I mean, by the time this comes out, it might have been. But, you know, The Flash is still going on. I'm just like... After the Russia thing, he thought this was okay because there was no hectic repercussions. There were ramifications. Exactly. So, so yeah, just... Isra Miller, we got our eyes on you. We're not. <laughs> this is the people watching we should you. be talking. Yeah, we're watching you. Um, and in other news, <laughs> we just have to mention uh, Black China Man. <laughs> so- okay, someone needs to give me context here because I. So, this part of the Kardashian can I've not been paying attention to. And so I saw, I saw the headlines of like, so she tweeted a bunch of like random stuff. I laughed at the re- the replies from both Tiger and Rob on that. Um, 
Yeah, go take it away. So, um, so, so the whole black giant thing is that she, um, she has a kid by Tiger, who yes. then started dating Kylie, and then she, and then while Tiger was dating Kylie, she started dating Rob, and then she had a kid by Rob. So mm-hmm. she was, it was chaotic. Anyway, she took to Twitter to complain that she had to sell some of her cars because she doesn't have enough money because she's a single mother with no support. And which which was like, oh, shame. And then Tiger commented on, I think it was like the Shade Room or one of those, one of those Instagram accounts posted like the screenshot or whatever. And he's like, I pay 40K a year for my son's school. He lives with me Monday to Saturday. Why would I pay child support? Lol. And then Rob wrote, I pay 37K a year for my daughter's school. Handle every single medical expense. I pay for all her extracurricular activities. I have my daughter from Tuesday to Saturday. Why would I pay child support? Lol. <laughs> I laugh because someone was like single mom Sundays. <laughs> okay, so I mean, custody is always a little awkward, and child support is also always a little awkward. But yeah, the whole thing is just screaming mess because in the background you still have court cases about assault charges. Mm. Then she's still suing the Kardashian clan because her show got cancelled. It's just so chaotic. I'm like, what is going on? But I don't know, the fact that she saw the need to complain, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you asked for it. Like, you, you started yeah. something when there was nothing. So now what must happen? Someone on Twitter was like, is she basically like a deadbeat dad? <laughs> and Shame. But, also- but I just wanted to say that, like, um, that, you know, I appreciate the fact that Black China is kind of bringing us this, this celeb um, Kardashian drama that we're not getting from, like, Scott or Kanye right now. Like, you know, we have to have one, like, um, or Tristan, one um, in-law or, like, in-law adjacent making some kind of crazy statement. So I appreciate that from Black China. Um, Before we head out, like, I know we already done our crashing on. You know, you spoke about Morbius and I spoke about We Crashed. But uh, what are you looking forward to that's coming up, Uh, Leanne? Ooh, so much. Uh, Off the top of my head, I think I'm just really keen, since we're on uh, season twos of things, um, Russian Doll season two coming in April. I Mm. am so keen because I know, Stephen, I binged the first season in a night, like went to bed at three in the morning because it was so good. Natasha Leone, I love her. She's so great. Mm. And that show, I'm just, I'm so keen to see where they're going to take it because I mean, I'll be honest, we binged in a night so I can't remember much. So I'm probably going to do a rewatch soon in anticipation. But yeah, looking forward to that one. For me, I'm really excited about The Shining Girls. Um, or Shining Girls. Yes. Um, it's coming on Apple TV on 29th of April. I really enjoyed the book. Uh, I actually just lent it to one of my cousins now because I was like, you need to read this book. And it basically tells the story of this woman trying to find the serial killer, but the serial killer has been killing people for decades, longer than a human lifespan. And it's like, how is he doing this? And it stars Elizabeth Moss. And it's it's written by South African author Lauren Bukas. So if you want to read it before watching it, go ahead. It's it's a good book. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know if you should or should not. But um, the show is probably going to be excellent. So I'm looking forward to it. I like a good crime series. That's my kind of... I, I, I'm like, my two extremes is like very romance and very crime or very comedic and very like dark crime. <laughs> chaos, absolute chaos. Mm. Actually, I would like to add, I am really looking forward to Disney Plus finally hitting our mm. shores. I'm really finally. hoping, I'm really, really hoping, I don't know if there's a way to see what they're going to have, but 
I really want them to have all those like old school Disney cartoons that used to come on like Disney's Cartoon Cafe. I don't know. I think they must have it because who else have the rights to that but them? Exactly. Like, I'm wanna... like, if if it does, I'm going down a time channel, like, watch. Mm. I'm ready to be a kid again and, like, binge all those, like, ridiculous cartoons. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's so much I want to watch. Like, I, I, like, the old Disney movies that I miss, like, the not popular ones that I, that I want to go back and watch. And mm-hmm. I'm also, you know what? I'm going to say I'm going to do this, but knowing my schedule, I'm probably never going to get around to doing it. But I'm a diehard Simpsons fan, and I haven't watched The Simpsons in quite some time because I just haven't had the time. Um, Mm. And because, like, it only comes on, on, like, Fox or one of those channels on DSTV. So it's like, it's like, and me and DSTV is like Russian roulette. Unless I'm watching it on on DSTV now, I am, whatever's on TV, uh, that's what I'm watching. Um, Yeah. So... So yeah, so I um so I haven't watched The Simpsons in quite some time. So I would love to be able to binge all of The Simpsons, which is like twenty years or thirty years worth of content, if I ever get the time to. That's that, that's what I'm most looking forward to on Disney Plus. So yeah, we hope you we can have more to talk to you guys about Disney Plus next, like in a few months' time. But yeah, that's our episode, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We will catch you here again next week where we have a great interview with yet another celebrity that we're not talking about, we're talking to. (laughs) So today's episode is brought to you by Syntec. Syntec is a technology company that sources and distributes industry-leading products and brands from around the world. We'll also be giving away some cool hampers in the coming weeks, so be sure to follow our social media for a chance to win. Do you need a doctor? I am a doctor. I should have died years ago. People all over the world have my disease. I'm here. To find a cure, we have to push the boundaries, take the risks. If you're gonna run, do it now. One of the most compelling and conflicted characters in Sony Pictures' universe of Marvel characters comes to the big screen as Oscar winner Jared Leto transforms into the enigmatic anti-hero Michael Morbius. Dangerously ill with a rare blood disorder, and determined to save others suffering his same fate, Dr. Morbius attempts a desperate gamble. While at first it seems to be a radical success, a darkness inside of him is unleashed. Will good override evil, or will Morbius succumb to his mysterious new urges? Not exactly. I have increased strength and speed, and some form of bat radar. What else can I do? Me, you can find at Karen Walby on Instagram, at Karen Walby's with an S on Twitter, and sign up for my newsletter, Wildest Dreams, at wildestdreams.substack.com. The podcast can be found at Crushing on Pod on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can find us at What's IGN Crushing on on YouTube, and you can find more information about this and all our other episodes on our website, crushingonpodcast.com. Send any feedback to mail at crushingonpodcast.com. And you can send us voice notes at plus two seven seven eight three six two two five six six. Join our Facebook group, Crushing On Club, where we chat about the show, celebrity news, recommendations, the whole shebang. The show is produced by me, Karen as well as Rebecca Barchers and Leanne Philipson. The show is edited by Rebecca Barchers. Our logo was designed by Nathifa Maruf, and the show was created in partnership with IGN Africa. If you like the show, tell everyone that you can, any way that you can. Keep up to date with episodes by subscribing to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
please rate and review the episodes in Apple Podcasts as it helps others to find the show. We'll be back next week with another in-depth conversation with a pop culture lover. See you then. Bye.